Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about raw access read. This is a specific event in Sysmon where a process gets a handle on a specific volume. And instead of using Windows 32 APIs to just read a file and get access to that file and the content of the file, what it's going to do is it's going to carve it out of the NTFS file system itself. The advantage of this is that let's say an attacker wants to get a copy of your NTDS.dead on a domain controller. There are multiple techniques that he can use. Like for example, he can just use the NTDS util to make a snapshot of the database itself. He can use shadow copies and he can create a snapshot of the volume itself to be able to then access the snapshot. He could probably just use a myriad of other tools. But the problem is that many of those tools are actually tracked by just avoiding all of that Windows 32 API, he's able to bypass some of those detections or looking for those specific cases where they're using common known techniques. In fact, the first time I actually saw this te technique was by Joe Bialik uh, when he presented this at DEF CON and he created Invoke Ninja Copy, which is part of PowerSploit. And it, it was a very nice technique, specifically, let's say that I land on a regular Windows system and I want to get access to the SAM Hive or I want to get access to the Security Hive and I want to copy those. Those are going to be locked or there are going to be some DACL or SACL applied to them where only a specific user is able to access that file. By being able to do a raw access read and not use the Win32 APIs, that means that I'm not honoring those SACLs or DACLs. I'm able to just carve that file out. So when we apply this to a host, we gotta be careful. The best way of applying it is by doing a snapshot. And our main false positives for this are going to be regular Windows binaries on the system services that are going to be running specifically for indexing files for search, also for backup. Uh, as well as backup utilities, specifically around virtual environments or VDI environments. I see a lot of applications that actually take snapshots of a drive and they are used for imaging. Same thing for deploying software. So let's take a look. Let's go over to our VM and how to see how we are going to process this. So here on this VM, what I have done is I just created a simple rule that I'm going to use to capture all of this information or just the normal behavior of Windows on this host to see what comes up. So I have a Fortlet schema. I have SHA-1 in this case with impash. I created a rule group, which I call raw access, where I have the event type raw access and match exclude, which is going to capture all of those. I've already applied this to the system. Let's take a look what are going to be some of defaults that we're going to be seeing on this machine. So I'm going to use PS Gumshoe and I'm going to do get sysmon raw access read. I'm going to pipe this to out grid view. And when we take a look here, we can see that SVC hose, we have search UI, service.exe are actually doing raw access reads to some of the volumes. Uh, in the past, well, another one that I've seen is WMIPRVSC, and there has been um, a couple of others that I've seen. So my recommendation in this is just to create a baseline per OS version of Windows, in addition to that per role, because depending on the different services that are going to be running in that box, we may see other executables also performing this task. So I'm going to create a specific exclusion for this that then I can leverage just to look for those outliers. So I'm going to close out grid view. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do select. I'm going to look at the first event so we can go over the fields that we have available to us in this specific event. As we can see, it's event ID number nine. And the information we have is the process query, process ID, and the image of the process that is getting that handle on the volume, what is the volume and the user under which this is happening. Now, the way that I recommend that you create some rules for this is, as you know, to make it as tight as possible. 
We don't have too many fields to work here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use image, the device and the user. And in the specific in terms of users, I'm going to just to be focusing on system or network service or any of those common windows known accounts and not user accounts because they, they're going to vary in our environment. So let's do this. So I'm going to do select and I'm going to just go for image, device, user, and I'm going to do convert to sysmon rule. And then what I'm going to then is type to set clipboard. And set it to the clipboard that ran. It's in my clipboard. In fact, one of the things that I should have done is just do a unique here. So I don't get any repeated values. Let me do that. Here we go. Now we're going to go into the same configuration that was my baseline. And in this exclude now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste that. Uh, I have the XML tools plugin installed here in Visual Studio Code. So what I'm going to do is Control Shift. I'm going to do Format as XML. So now everything looks a lot better. I'm going to look here, and as you can see in my uniques, everything was under system. Nothing was under my administrator user, which is awesome. Uh, in most environments, we're going to have multiple other services that is running as the user. Specifically on Windows um, 10 boxes, Windows 11 boxes, there's going to be a lot more noise that we have to contend with. Here we have some random characters. I'm going to eliminate this random characters over here. Just as with the other events, I'm going just to put a colon here, and then I'm going to do contains all a semicolon. I'm going to save this. I'm going to apply it now into my machine. And see if I have one here for administrator. Yes, I do. CD desktop. This one minus C. And the way I call this file is desconfig. Okay. I'm going to right now do desconfig. I'm going to do a minus C to take a look at it. There's my configuration. Awesome. So just for this test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the event log here for Sysmon operational. So I only get those outliers of stuff that should not be running in this machine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an old utility called row copy 64.exe that performs the same tasks that we're trying to prevent. So let's see if we capture this. Uh, profile mock. There we go. I was able to copy the file and place it in the folder. So let's take a look now with get this mon raw accessory. Here we can see that raw copy 64 was actually captured. And the way that I would correlate this with other events, it's actually going to be through the process good. This is why this process good is so important. And it's one of the things that I actually mentioned in process create. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to use that invoke ninja copy code but it was actually ported over into the Power Forensics module since Invoke Ninja Copy is part of PowerSploit and PowerSploit has been sadly abandoned by the authors. So one of the things I can do is I can just do copy forensic file and then I can do path I'm going to do C Windows NTDS NTDS dot dead. I'm going to do destination C 
NTDS dot git file. Now I need to be running as administrator to have a raw access to any of the volumes. So let's run this. And now let's do git sysmon raw access read. Select source four was the most recent one. And here we can see powershell.exe. And again, we can reference it by the file, by the process do it back to the process as additional information, parent process that created it, when was it created? And then we can hunt with that process go it across other events, which is going to be awesome. It's going to simplify our lives. So as you can see, this is a very simple event type that we can use for tracking this specific technique when somebody's trying to steal, let's say an NTDS.dead or any other file on the system that may be locked. It could be a database, it could be a registry hive, or it could be any other type of file where they know the specific path. Since they're running as administrator, they're going to be able to, at the very least, enumerate those files to find them. Again, I really hope that you found this information useful and remember to like and subscribe.